Yo, what's good, Joe? It's your man, the bigger P, and I'm um, just here to share my thoughts on last night's uh, doubleheader on HBO. Um, first of all, was the co-main event, uh, Nonito Denaire versus uh, Nicholas Walters. Um, I was, I've been anticipating this fight for a while since it was made, uh, mostly because of you know, a couple of a couple of reasons. One, you know, Donaire, um, you want to know if he still has anything left because ever since his um, his his loss to Rigando, um, he's looked very shaky at best. Um, first, which is the rematch with Victor Chinian, in which Vic was more in the fight than what I expect him to be, and you know, even when both of them are really out of their prime weights before Donaire's power eventually rescued him and he knocked them out. And then afterwards, he won his version of the featherweight title off at Yeka and didn't look all that good in that fight, although he did knock him down. So most people were, most people were still wondering if Donaire had anything left. Um, if the, if the, or if he could actually try to find something that would revert him back to the old day that we all used to watch. And then we have Nicholas, Nicholas Walters, who's been quietly mowing down challengers. Um, you know, before last year, before earlier this year, where on the on the undercard of um, Donair Vitjeka, um, he oh, he faced a common opponent in Vic, Vic Darchinian and you know reeled off a highlight reel KO on him. You know, knocked him cold. So it's like you know, so we're like you have two fighters. You know. Go clearly of high skill, and you know they're going to, you know, they got face off on each other, and so you don't know if Donaire's experience and left hook is gonna is gonna win this fight out, or is it gonna be Walters and his youth and his power that will win this fight out. Um, and uh, in the early going of the fight, it looked like you know there was just pretty much a much more or less a feel out round, but in the second round when he started opening up, Donaire managed to catch him and. Uh, and Walter started doing, you know, started doing that stiff-legged mummy walk, because um, you know he got rocked and he got rocked hard. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, Donaire, you know, may pull it out. But then pretty much after that, Walter got composed and he just started working behind the jab and just round after in round after round. I think he scored a knockdown in the third round. He started cutting up Donaire with just his jab. It was just a solid long jab. It was, you know, it was textbook. Um, Donaire just had no answer for it, and he was just catching, and he was just catching a beating, just getting cut up. And then in the sixth round, following another, you know, so following another brutal exchange, um, Walters dropped a monster right hand. Almost, it looked like he was back in the head, but I think him like maybe right high up on the temple, and Donaire just went down in a heap. Um, you, 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 I mean, I'm a fan of Donaire, so I, I, I hated to see. Him just get beaten up like the way he did, um, but I have to uh, take my hat, you know, take my hat to Nicholas Walters. I mean, he did he did his thing, um, and that was a star making performance. And he's pretty much he he previously stopped someone who had never been knocked down and never knocked out in his career. So the sky is the limit for him. Um, it's a, it was a it was a wonderful performance, and I'm probably gonna rewatch that fight a little later when the replay comes on. Um, uh, yeah, I would love to see Walters in the ring with any of the other champions, with Johnny Gonzalez, um, with Gradovich, uh, with Lomachenko. All those fights, I believe, can actually be made. There's no real restrictions. Or hell, I mean, at least, at least, or maybe even Rigando, if you want to be, I mean, all the, I mean, if, you know, Rigando wants to actually move up to 126, you know, which is a marquee, which is, which is slowly becoming more of a marquee division, um, but yeah, all of those fights, uh, all those fights can definitely made, and I would, and I definitely looking forward to see um, the X Man do his thing again. Um, as for Donaire, I mean, you, I mean, you have, I mean, pretty much that fight. Although this wasn't, I mean, this wasn't the fight where you say, okay, Donaire didn't look great, because Donaire actually looked fine, but he just, like I said, he was just, it was just too much. Walters just simply had his number that night. Um, most people are probably thinking now retirement is the way for Donaire. Although physically, I, I mean, I didn't see anything that says to me that physically that he's done as a fighter. I mean, as in loss of speed or power, anything like that. But 
it's it's clear that the loss of desire is is start is start is uh evident. Um, and boxing is one of those things you can't really do. You can't do it half ass, or if you do, you can't do it half ass for very long um, before someone catches you. Um, so I mean, I, I myself, I don't want to see Donaire. If he has, I don't want to see Donaire go out in that fight. But I'd rather see him at least get one more fight in, and you know, give him a soft touch or something, or and then you know, go off and you know, go off in a sunset if that's you know, if that's the case for him. But uh, um, well, I guess we'll see what happens with Donaire um, in the follow out of this fight. Um, the main event was uh, Triple D Gennady Golovkin versus uh, Marco Antonio Rubio. Now, pretty much every place I know had GG GGG as the betting favorite. Um, why? I mean, well, yeah, because uh, Rubio has no Rubio is not a bad fighter. I mean, he's he's been in he's been in the ring with lots of casino uh, with. Uh, um, Kelly Pavlik, uh, Carlos Baldwin, I believe, um, and pretty much he's given, you know, he, he's he's a tough guy. He's knocked out, you know, of Julio Cesar um, Chavez Jr. and he's pretty much given a lot of, um, you know, pretty much good performance. I mean, he's most known for taking the zero off of David Lemieux in seven rounds a couple of years back. Um, so you, so it, pretty much you know he's capable of producing an upset. Which is pretty much the which is the only thing that I had in mind as I was going to this butt. Um, granted, I thought the fight would at least extend past five rounds, but I guess the fuckery already started at Friday, where Rubio came in 1.8 pounds overweight, and uh, after two hours, didn't bother to lose it. So not bother to lose it, and not want to drain himself more. Um, this, of course, is not a really good look for Garcia's camp, as they've had histories of, of their fighters um, either not making weight or getting popped with something that shouldn't be taken. So, I mean, pretty much functionally, Rubio had a weight advantage because he can't, he think he ballooned up almost 20 pounds. He was a cruiserweight by the time of the fight. Whereas, uh, G, uh, Triple G, I think, I think he was like 172 or 173. He was, within, you know, he was within the light heavyweight um, range. And, um, Although of course, really doesn't mean the weight advantage. I mean, it means either a Ruby would either take his power, take his punches a little bit better, or you know, give it a hard night. But it seems like Rubio didn't really want to dig deep um, in this fight, and it was say, and it was a shame too, because the first round was pretty looked like you know Rubio actually caught Triple G a couple of times. So you're thinking to myself, okay, you know, Rubio has a little dog in him. But in the second round, after getting caught with, you know, after catching another series of shots and then followed by that high left hand that he took that went him down, you know, and I know Rubio. Rubio is eyes were clear. He could have gotten up. He could have gotten up well before nine and not do that bullshit, you know, that some fighters like, you know, some fighters like to do when they've had enough or they don't want to, you know, work too hard. You know, they pop up shortly after 10 saying, hey, you know, what's going on? I was up. You know, they do that bullshit. Um, so yeah, the, the the finish to that fight was just very anticlimactic, and it was um, and it was a shame because, like I said, uh, Triple G obviously didn't show any you no know, no show of supporters. I mean, you heard his name being echoed all over the arena. Although the HBO needs to calm down on uh, just you know on the on the whole. I mean, yes, Triple G is a good fighter, but just calm down on mentioning him and you know every single you know every single time and. You know, it, you know, just you know, having G, the Triple G all in their mouths and everything like that. It's like you, know, you need to calm down. I almost had to mute my TV a couple of times. And I like Triple G, but you know, just you know, just be easy on that. Um, so Triple G, I mean, at this point now, we definitely want to see Triple G. Triple G is a fast rising star. There's no question about that. But now we need to see him in the ring with. We we, we need to see him I give him a good. Notable opponent, like I know there have been fights with um, discussed or thrown around um, with Sergio, with Miguel Cotto, who he mentioned, and uh, Canelo Alvarez, we called a good boy, which I laughed. Um, Chavez Jr. and then Andre Ward um, for fights that, and you know, for fights for Triple G. And I definitely, and it's time now for Triple G to actually face a name contender. I agree, I know this is out of, mostly, largely out of his control, but, um, 
but yeah, I mean, he the man has been pretty active. I mean, he's been what seven times? He's fought seven fights in the last two years. So I would love. To, so I would love. So he is more than ready now to face a name somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in his next fight, whoever it might be. Um, as for Rubio, I mean, what did he do? I mean, he pretty much he laid down for you know two rounds of work. He got like was it three hundred, four hundred k. Whatever you know, minus whatever hundred k that he got off his press for not making the weight. Um, I mean, Rubio. I mean, Rubio would just probably just soldier on as he usually does. He may produce one more upset, but like I said, that loss really wasn't a good look for him. Um, he, I felt he should have just put a little more effort. I mean, to fight, you're a boxer. I mean, you know, you're you know he's known for a tough guy, but you know you're you know you're pretty much lying down pretty much in two rounds. And was, I mean, I rather really see you just knocked out legit. Then you walk, you know, popping up clear eyed and like you didn't hear the count or you misheard the count, you know. So yeah, so yeah, those are my thoughts on the doubleheader. Um, HBO. I mean, I I I didn't, I didn't say this coming. I mean, HBO their, their remaining fight schedule is a lot stronger, a lot lot stronger than Showtime. So I mean, Showtime's the cards that come up for that. I mean, I think there's only one card that I saw, and um, yeah, I was not impressed, but. You know, HBO has a good has a good lineup of cards to finish to finish out the year, and hopefully, maybe we'll get a fight of the year out of one of these networks, one way or the other. So, so yeah, I mean, that's all I had um, for but in regards to the doubleheader. Um, so, until next time, peace.